I read that in your mm-hmm. packet. You love different strokes. And I thought, oh, well, uh, today these lefty writers would say you have a white savior complex because you're not allowed to like different strokes anymore because the white guy adopted the two black kids. And that's why we're not allowed to like the blind side because the white family, I don't, it's not adopted, but imposed a conservative ship on Michael Orr. The black. So this turned into this massive fight and the litigation is ongoing. He's suing the Tuohys their relationship memorialized in the blind side, just in case folks are not up to speed and saying they didn't actually adopt me. They misrepresented what they were doing with me. Um, I didn't get any of the proceeds of the blind side, the book by Michael Lewis or the um, movie that became so popular afterwards starring Sandra Bullock in which she won an Oscar for portraying Lee Tui. And um, I want money. I want it. And now, so now he's just now, he's not backing down because this, the family hired a legal gunslinger named Marty Singer and he's saying, this is ridiculous. This guy tried to extort this loving family, said, give me several million, between five and $8 million or else I'm gonna go public with it. They said, no, we love you. Don't do this to us. You're our third child. He's still pushing it. And the latest was he, he's demanding now a full accounting of all their money. Uh, their, the Tui's money, the money they made off of all these projects, yes. Uh, so he's basically trying to you know, subject them and their finances to the fine tooth comb so he can figure out how much, if any, he's owed. And this as just, it was about two weeks ago, yet another white supremacy piece drops in connection with this whole story. I just wanna give you the background because these pieces are coming mm-hmm. now fast and furiously in the wake of this uh, story. Mm. This is by Elizabeth Spires, it's dated August 26th. Uh, and she writes, I have a pretty good idea why Michael Orr is angry. My, I, my, I'm having a problem seeing up close. I gotta put on my readers. I never wear readers, but my eyes bother me. Yeah, so here, this is my my intellectual look. This is what she says. Uh, First she says, the perception of adoption as an act of altruism is exponentially more pronounced when black kids are adopted by white parents. It implies, she says that black children need to be rescued by white people. And that makes white people feel good about doing it. See, this is what you were going through when you watched Different Strokes, you just didn't know it. This is often referred to as white savior syndrome. The idea that black children are automatically better off with nice white parents than their own biological parents is just white supremacy. I mean, it's like, well, maybe depends on the circumstance, lady. It depends on the black parent, the white parent. All right, she goes on to say, it doesn't always arrive, white supremacy doesn't always arrive wearing a white pointed hood or muttering racial slurs. It's often just a presumption of white benevolence. This is all in the context of the Michael Orr Tui fight. She writes, nowhere is this more apparent than at schools like Briarcrest. That's where Michael Orr went, went thanks to in part the Tuis, which were founded right. amid desegregation by people who regarded themselves as nice white parents and who did not want their children to attend school with black children. She goes on from there talking about how this whole story is an example of white saviorism. The Tuis ought to be ashamed of themselves for trying to help Michael Orr. And she objects big time to Michael Lewis's portrayal of Orr as maybe not the brightest bulb in the entire school, uh, which is one of his complaints. But what do you make of the whole controversy now as history gets rewritten every day? Pure ignorance, beyond ignorant. Um, My first pushback is this is something that a lot of people are guilty of of late. Like it's, it's really growing in numbers of this time shift. So what they will use is an aesthetic of today's time, something in the present that looks a certain way. And then we'll connect it to something that occurred in the past and says, see, this is another example of that without coloring in the actual content and context that makes those two completely different things. But off a quick glimpse, hey, it's a black guy got adapted by white people. Then we could go back 50 years when this school didn't even want black kids there. And I'm like, are we doing this again? And let me push back with this. This is my real example. So Different Strokes was my favorite show growing up. What people don't know is that I grew up my grandmother's house in Compton. And we had two patients that we were taking care of. One was a war veteran and one was an older lady, elderly lady who had some mental health issues. Both of them were white. I grew up 
in a world that is trying to whisper and if not yell to me that white people are superior, that there's white supremacy. And I'm hearing that. And as you grow older, you see more examples of racism and segregation and discrimination. You hear all that. But imagine a kid that is growing up on welfare that's black that takes care of two white people people. So I'm all over the place in terms of this dynamic because I never ever bought into white people have something that I don't have. Matter of fact, when you really pushed me, I said, I know at least two white people that need me for their daily necessities. They count on me. So when you're walking around feeling inferior, if you are, how do you reconcile that with my existence? a welfare black kid in Compton taking care of white people. So that's mm -hmm. kind of my foundation. So that made me always have to look deeper in detail to every circumstance. You're never going to catch me with some lazy flyover just saying, black, white, what do you think? And I'm like, I'm not thinking anything until you tell me something. And that's where we are in this situation. Michael Orr, my first glance at it, I was like, oh, just on timeline, just on the dates, I was skeptical. I was like, Michael Orr, why now? You know, this movie is a decade old, why now? Um, but then I will give them this. It's okay to ask for full accounting from someone, except why does it have to be antagonistic? Why does it have to be adversarial? Why do you have to combat someone who obviously opened up their heart, their home to you? If anything, if I have any suspicion, I would have done it privately. And I would say, can we just do a full forensic audit? That's it. And you guys would have never found out about it. Just mm. for the, the thanks of taking me in as they did. But I'm not Mike Orr. And this situation doesn't make a lot of sense to me. It's crazy how so many, this is just the one example, but I, we could have gone down the list. And we did when Jason Whitlock was on of the number of writers who have gone with the the two E's are suspect because they adopted or performed this conservatorship for a black boy. Like the, we're sick of the white people doing this to, to satisfy their need for white saviorship. We're sick of the success of that movie because white people need to see themselves portrayed as saviors. And as I read this line in this piece, the idea that black children are automatically better off with white parents than their own biological parents is just white supremacy. No one's saying that they're automatically better off. Who's saying that? In this particular case of Michael Orr, the Tuies sw swooped in and helped him in a way that yep. was really heartwarming. His mother, the, Jason Whitlock, actually took a deep dive on Orr's book uh, and then also mm -hmm. The Blind Side, and this was the reporting. Orr's mother was addicted to crack cocaine and birthed a dozen children with a variety of men. She would disappear for days ingesting cocaine with friends. Her kids as young as 14 months would be left locked out of their apartment. This was a regular pattern. State social workers eventually intervened or moved from foster home to foster home. So yeah, removal from that particular home was a plus from, from Michael Orr, irrespective of the skin color, right? But everything's gotta be racialized. It's just sad. And it's sad how it gets exploited by these you know, people with an agenda. Yeah, with an agenda and no experience. like. Um, excuse me, my mother's a crack addict. Uh, I would take any stable, secure home, black, white, orange. But now, since it's a narrative, since it's something that we can say in prose instead of experience, now we can now make this look different and re-identify the particulars of this situation. Michael Orr wouldn't have cared where he went, as long as it was better than at that time for us to now retroactively redefine that to me is absurd and they do it all the time they do it so many ways and it's hilarious because it's really because of the symbolism it's because of the value system that people have placed on white america black america etc and they don't want to really dive into it uh are white people richer than black people in general yes are white people more than black people in numbers. Yes. So people don't, they always switch it on you. It's like, you can't just say white and make me think something, but they want you to. You can't just say black and make me think something, but they want you to. And if you don't stand strong 
in the details of every one of these circumstances, you'll get washed away in the ignorance like that author is. I always wanted to grow my own vegetable garden, and now I have a Lomi, and it's changed the way I think about food waste. Lomi transforms my garbage into gold at the press of a button. It's fun. Lomi is a countertop electric composter that turns food scraps into dirt in under four hours. Now I'm loving the composting. Plus, it's made cooking at home even more fun. Well, it's made it fun, period. It wasn't fun. <laughs> now it's a little fun. There's no food rotting in the garbage, smelling up the kitchen. Thanks to Lomi, you have to take out the trash far less frequently. You can turn your waste into nutrient-rich dirt that you can then feed to your plants, your lawn, or your garden. All your food scraps, your plant clippings, even those leftovers in the back of the fridge can go boom into the garden, helping grow more nutritious food right in your own backyard. Whether you want to stay making a positive environmental impact or you just want to grow a beautiful garden, Lomi is perfect. Head to Lomi.com slash MK, L-O-M-I.com slash MK. Use the promo code MK to get 50 bucks off your order. That's $50 off when you head to LOMI.com slash MK. Use the promo code MK at checkout for your discount. Turn your food waste into dirt with the press of a button thanks to Lomi. Use the code MK to save 50 bucks. Lomi.com slash MK. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.